Welcome to Revamped Outdoors. My name's Elliot. Today we're going to take a pair of old boots, turn it into a sheath for a knife. Stick around if that's something you're into. Hey, thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. Admittedly, don't have a whole lot of experience with a cricket. Just bought it uh, this last week. Uh, and I think the the cricket, or as I like to call it, the cry cut, because um, it's not spelled like cricket, for one, and for two, it's it's a big machine. It's it's not a little tiny arthropod, but but I don't think the cricket gets enough actual attention as a usable CNC machine in the home. Not only for craft projects, primarily associated with uh, individuals that would like to do scrap booking. Booting, scrapbooking, crafts, but I think it people are missing a very big section of what the cricket is capable of. Being a CNC cutter, I think it has a lot of useful purpose in a workshop or something where you're doing a little bit more heavy fabrication. I think it's very useful to have a CNC cutter, and for the price point at which you can get a Cricut Explore 2 right now for under $230, or the Maker for under $300. $350. This is all United States currency. I think we're kind of missing the mark on what the Cricut is capable of. So in this video, I'm going to go through how I made this very badly sewn together uh, knife sheath. This is for a Rapala fillet knife. I got this one time. I was fishing. I was camp fishing, so I was away from the house. I was probably three or four hours away from the house. I stayed over at a resort. The resort had a small tackle shop. I forgot my fillet knife at home. Obviously, I was fishing for walleyes, and I needed something that I could easily um, address the fish that I caught that day. So I went in and I bought this for $6 from the small shop, uh, and this type of Rapala, it's just a stainless steel basic blade. It has a uh, more than likely ABS handle. This didn't come with a sheath, so I've always kept this in our knife drawer at the house and every time I open the knife drawer I swear this thing almost takes my hand off. So I decided while well, I wanted to do a sheath I had done 3D printed knife sheath videos before didn't want to 3D print it so I figured I have a Cricut why not try and cut leather with it so I have the maker there's two types of Cricuts there's well there's a lot of types of Cricuts but there's only a few that actually are CNC cutters so the Cricut Explore 2 Basically, is a machine that you, use, you can use to cut small crafts, smaller, thinner diameter paper, things like that. Um, it doesn't quite have the pressure that the Cricut Maker does. So if you're looking into doing anything with like leather, fabrics, uh, balsa wood, basswood as well, you can get the razor um, blade inside, the attachment for that, that can cut those materials a little bit thicker. The Maker is what I went with just because I do a lot of this kind of... Um, fabrication stuff with kind of thicker materials than you would use in scrapbooking. But being from the design background that I have on this channel for the last year and a half or so using CAD software, specifically Autodesk Fusion 360, I decided that it would probably be a good idea to figure out how I could take some of my three-dimensional sketches uh, or if I wanted to design something dimensionally perfect that I want to cut on the Cricut how can I import that into the Cricut to get it to cut? So I've been messing around with that for the last week and a half. And primarily what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to go through Autodesk Fusion 360, which is free to get a license for if you sign up as a startup business. So someone who makes $100,000 or less a year. So you can get a license for free as a startup business or as a hobbyist. They consider it a hobbyist as a startup still, but... It's irrelevant as long as you don't make over $100,000 a year. And if you are doing, you can probably handle the licensing fee for the software at that point. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into Fusion 360. I'll show you how I got this to be cut on the Maker without actually designing in Design Space. Because although the Maker itself does great at cutting materials, the Design Space leaves a little bit uh, to be desired. So this video is not really going to be a Fusion 360 tutorial. The reason it's not going to be is because you can have other people show you way better than what I could do. But I'll show you the basics. Um, 
Fusion 360 is basically a planar CAD program. So in the upper right hand corner here, you can see there's all sorts of different sides. This is how we're going to do things three dimensionally. For this specific purpose on using it on a Cricut, I'm just going to use it on the top uh, and I'm going to start a new sketch. It's all sketch based. So I start here, I'm looking at the top. So basically we're at a zero, zero plane. If I shift this around, you can see what I mean. It's all based off of sketches. So you have to make a sketch and then the, the program itself will interpolate that sketch later. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add in some stuff as soon as I find my pictures. All right, so now what we have to do that we have the sketch flat, what we have to do is we have to find the dimensions of this blade here. And Fusion 360 allows you to do an attached canvas and calibrate that to the real world. And I've done this in another video. If you um, are interested in that, you can see it. It's about designing a CAD without using specific measurements. So in this case, I'm just going to lay a tape measure behind this blade, take a picture, and then we can import it in as a um, attached canvas, which is right here. So I click Insert, Attach Canvas. I want it to go on that side. I gotta find it. I'm gonna put it onto that plane itself. I'm gonna say OK. So then what I wanna do is I have this picture. So this picture is now put into Fusion 360. Fusion 360 doesn't know what size that is supposed to be at all. It has no idea. So what we have to do is go into the canvases over here in our browser. I'm going to right click that and I'm going to calibrate this picture to the size that the project wants to be. So it's going to ask you, I'm going to go right here on this line and this line. So now that's one inch in the picture world. What we need to do is tell Fusion 360 to make this picture one inch in the CAD world. So I use CAD with millimeters all the time. I don't use it with inches. Um, they're not fine enough for the type of things I do, so I'm comfortable in millimeters. So what I need to do is tell Fusion 360 to blow this up by that much to make it one inch to be 25.4 millimeters. So I'm gonna put this in 25.4. So that lets Fusion know that that inch then is gonna be 25.4 millimeters. So when I do that, it's going to blow the picture up. So now Fusion 360 has referenced that photo to be the actual real life size of this knife. Wrong way. Of this knife. So now this size, anything I model in there should actually be this size. So now it's simple. Now I'm just going to do different lines. Like I said, I won't get into this too much. Um, just because, you know, you can find somebody that's way better at doing this than I am. Um, but I'm just going to go probably that big. Looks good. My idea here is to sew this at some point, uh, each side of the leathers that I'm going to use to make this. So what I want to do is give it a little bit of room on either side so I can do a stitch down each side. So I'm just going to bring this line here. We could do something like this, something like that, say OK. Then, so if anybody's interested in actual Fusion 360 type stuff, um, I'm going to do a control spline here, which allows me to kind of follow the bend in the blade. And the CAD software is going to follow it for me right so now it's a layered program as well fusion 360 so I can take this layer out and now what we're left with is this outline of the blade in actual size right so it's the actual size we're thinking it is so before I export it I'm gonna to go to sketch dimension it's 29.372 millimeters so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move that to 30 just so I remember it easier it's fine you don't have to do that, but now we know it's 30 millimeters at its widest point here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the sketch. I'm going to go to sketches. 
I'm going to save this as a DXF. Do something, knife blade, whatevs. Whatevs. Save. Bump in the microphone. So now we're in the design space. You're probably familiar with this if you're familiar with, you know, anything Cricut. What we need to do is upload image. So now we found it. So we found our DXF file. So we're going to put our DXF in. You want to click it, insert the image into your design space. So this is where we were having issues before trying to determine how big it was. When it imports, it's going to be arbitrary. It's how it imports into the design space because the DXF is not actually set up for scaled models. DXF is just like SVG. Everything's proportionate within the file set, but not everything has a specific dimension. What you have to do then is bring it down to that 30 millimeters that we wanted for the width of it. And right now it's at 5.9 centimeters. So what we need is three centimeters, also 30 millimeters. So we'll do 3.0. Now we're set up. We got dimensionally accurate that's the actual size of what this knife is so ideally when we cut that it should be the right size for this that's basically all there is to it you can set the color over here I like white just so I know I can look at it and see where it cuts okay we're gonna do a cut the way I cut these was like this. So the leather we're going to use for this project is just old boot leather. So I took a pair of old work boots I had. Um, they're leaning really hard to the right. I'm a bigger guy. Uh, the feet, you know, start to limp one side and then the boot's gone. So basically I cut off the leather uppers for this. And uh, you're basically left with leather. Not sure what this actual determination of this leather is it's boot leather right so i probably wouldn't make earrings out of old boots because well it doesn't smell that bad it smells like leather but the idea is the same i would make more utilitarian things out of old boot leather but what i did is i put this on the cricket mat on a strong grip mat uh, and taped down all four sides with blue painters tape and then i used the razor to cut it so what we're gonna do is I had to put this down about right here to get on the pattern that I actually wanted the next cut I did is I replaced the leather and I swapped it with a mirror so that I knew they could be put together on either side with the similar pattern on either side they're not perfect but it's old boot leather it doesn't need to be perfect so then I let it cut and I think what I did is I set it up on like the two to four ounce um, tooling leather. I think that does three passes or something. This leather itself is really, really kind of, it's not very strong. It's not really like tooling leather. You can cut it with a scissors, so it's not exactly the strongest stuff in the world, but cut really well. Uh, it actually cut better with the non-textured side stuck to the mat. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about cutting leather and you have a smooth side of the leather. Better to put it down on the mat. It sticks a lot better. It doesn't curl up. I actually had it curl up on me one time because it actually cut it in two passes completely through. So then when it went over again, it actually curled on itself and got caught. So I had to retract it out the back. Um, did work well, though. Then I transitioned over into a sewing machine, just a standard cheap brother sewing machine you get from Walmart. Um, I'm just using standard thread with this because it was kind of a, let's see if this works project. It seemed to work well. Just using standard sewing thread with it, um, garment thread. I, I don't know what the weight is on it. It's not waxed or anything. Um, and it sewed right through this leather, no problem. So I ended up doing three or four passes. Uh, you can probably see in the thumbnail and right here that, uh, yeah, I'm not very good at the straight lines, um, but that's not really what I'm about more about just doing stuff you know it works but so far it works just fine put it in there like that grab the knife no problem I thought about putting also a little 
uh, especially with the belt loops from the boots themselves or belt loops sorry the finger loops from the top portion of the belts thought about putting those on there too but uh, you know, I sewed these two together just to see if it would work. And then I, I said, you know what, that would be really cool putting those loops on. So kind of missed the window on that one, but it's okay. So it's another, uh, useful kind of around the house project for a cricket. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that. I don't know. Hopefully it didn't go too long. It feels like I've been recording this now for 32 minutes. So I hope and pray that, uh, I went ahead and reduced that for you because I wouldn't sit through 30 minutes. So hopefully I got some funny cuts or something in there. Hopefully I'm entertaining for you because that's half the battle here. I'm trying to have fun, but also be entertaining, make something. So overall, I'm impressed with the Cricut Maker experience. Uh, I got did get it on sale, and then I did. They had 50% off at my local Joann's for the um, all accessories. So I ended up getting quite a few replacement mats and some vinyl and stuff to play around with. Uh, it until I figured out kind of what I wanted to use it more for. Um, I've been using it to cut out reeds for game calls. Seems to work quite well for that as, uh, as well. So very happy with it so far. Haven't had too many issues. Not a big fan of the design space. Like I said before, they could really um, get some input on other CAD designs. So stuff like Autodesk, maybe Onshape. Um, you know, there's quite a few good CAD programs out there that are a little bit better than this, like Tinkercad and stuff. I know this is a two-dimensional design space, but at the same time, there's a few things that they could gleam from a 3D design space that would be very, very helpful. For instance, the ability to zoom in and out. Can't do that like with a scroll mouse or anything like that. Uh, dimensionally accurate type of things is very big. When you move into the make space on design space, you lose all your orientation on your part so you could have it in the actual working design space exactly how you wanted it two inches away four inches you know from the top the second you hit make it it's all over doesn't matter even if it's one color doesn't matter where it's on add on the mat it's going to go in the upper left every time so you need to rearrange it again then when you have to rearrange it you can't do it dimensionally right so unless you come up with a few tricks where you can attach different things together it's just a pain it should what it looks like in the design space should be what it looks like on the make mat that's all i'm saying stuff like that so i hope they tease that out a little bit i'm i think it probably won't happen but i hope they do it uh, if they're watching the video if you guys want suggestions hit me up on the emails this stuff so if you're new to the channel and you liked it maybe give a like maybe consider subscribing. This is kind of off base for my channel. Usually it's more 3D printing uh, and stuff like that. But if you are into the outdoors or you do a lot of stuff with a Cricut Maker and you might want to tune in to see what I use it for later because I will be using this quite a bit. I made a decal for the truck. Uh, turned out pretty well. So I don't know if that's something more people want to see. Let me know and I'll walk you through it. But till the next one, keep your amps up and your filament dry.